tutorial on using git from the command line. So I'm assuming you have git installed, you can check out its man page, like so. The basic idea of git, git works on the repository, or sorry, the directory level. So you have a project, it goes in a folder or a directory. I'm gonna call mine, I'm gonna follow the same name as I used here, I'm gonna call it my repo. Uh, my repo. Um, but it could be whatever name you want. So now you have the directory, you add some files to it, you know, you start programming. And uh, let's say I have another one. So I got two files and I want to create a git repo. All I have to do is type in git in it. And there you go. And if I look now, I can see I have this dot git directory there. I can go under there and see all the stuff. Generally don't mess with anything there uh, except uh, you know the config. So you might want to at least look at the config and it'll tell you how things are set up currently for your git repo. Uh, so what actually happened is, you know, when I did that git in it, well, actually it just created an empty repo at the moment. And uh, what I then have to do is add, I want to add, uh, the way you work with git is, uh, if you type in git status, it'll tell you the status of git currently. So it's tell me I'm on the master branch. And I have the following untracked files. So that untracked means they are not in the Git repo. So, because I haven't added anything to the Git repo. So the way this works is, Git works, is I'm going to take one or more files, put them in a staging area, and then commit all of them at once with one commit message. Right? So to add, let's say I wanted to add those files, I just say Git add. I'm adding them to the staging area. So I can do it like that. Git add, and then if I type git status now, it'll tell me, you know, changes to be committed, but they haven't been committed yet, so they're just there waiting. And then I can commit, git commit. And uh, if I type that in, enter, and then it'll pop up a, an editor of my choice, Emacs in my case, and I'll let me add that, but that's gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna Put the message right here. You can put the message also here. This is small. So my first commit, and there you go. So now if I do git status, it says nothing to commit. Everything's up to date. Everything's been checked in. I can also do git log, which we'll do often, and it shows you what happened. So, and let's say now I'm doing more programming and I'm going to add more lines. You know, this is my second line. So I just now my file has two lines. I made some changes on my code. And if I do git status now, you'll see it says that that file has been modified, but B hasn't been modified. So only A. And uh, let's say I'm done. Awesome. Let's time, time to commit again. So git commit, I'm sorry, git add. And as a shorthand, just do that. Git add dot will add uh, all the change files in all the subdirectories. As you can see, if you type git status, it says that one's ready, and git commit second commit status git log. There you go. First commit, second commit, and that this is like ninety nine percent of your workflow is going to be like that, right? You adding stuff to your file. Third one, and then adding to the staging file, and then committing it. And that is 99% of what you're gonna be doing is that. Um, hopefully you do a lot of commits every day, you know, if you're having a productive day. Now, GitHub, uh, GitHub. So, we've been doing all this. Now, I already created this GitHub repo Called my repo and I want to push to it and then nice github nicely tells me the command I need to do commands I need to use so 
Uh, this is one. Copy and paste this guy right here. And so what that did is it added uh, this remote branch to as an origin. Uh, or named it origin. So you can see if I do dot git config, if I look at my config file, this was added. So it's saying uh, this here, uh, this URL is a repo, which is a remote repo, which I'm calling origin. And we can fetch from it and we're gonna fetch uh, basically all the branches. And then the other thing you wanna add is this one here. So this one will push my master branch over there. If I do that, then uh, hopefully in a second or two, it's you know it's pushing it now. It's gonna push everything to the GitHub. Uh, but uh, double check that. If I reload that page, you can see that yep, indeed it pushed everything. So now I have a that text and b that text over there. Awesomeness. And uh, it also did another thing. So it did the dash u here. The dash u, what that did was, and you can see again in the GitHub config, it added this. So because I did that dash u, now it's saying that I can now, you know, the, the master branch at origin is going to be merged with my local master branch. So when I do a pool, if I do a git pool without giving any arguments, it's going to pull the remote master branch from here and it's going to merge it from with my local branch. Now, if you're the only one working on this repo, this will never happen because the only way things can get updated over there are if you update them. But when you have more than one person working, uh, this will happen a lot, right? So you're going to do a lot of git pulls, which will pull in the changes from the upstream or the GitHub repo. Okay. Uh, while we're here, let's do something a little more advanced. Let's look at branches. So if you do a git branch, it tells me there's one master branch. And again, if you're the only one, maybe that's all you need. But um, the idea of a branch, a branch is just like taking the whole directory and copying it, right? So you've probably done this, that you have a directory with a program. It kind of works and you want to try something else. So you take the whole directory and you make a copy of it, right? So, and then usually you'll put a date to it, you know, like 2012, whatever. You have, you end up with all these directories with dates on them. It's just a mess, it's very, very ghetto, right? Um, you can uh, get around that and do it much nicer with the branches that Git provides you. So, what you do is you type Git, check out and a branch name I'm gonna call, uh, Sorry, first I have to create the branch name. Uh, so I'm going to create a branch called JM Vidal, and then uh, you can call it whatever you want, right? So bug or fix or try and stuff or whatever. And then I'm going to check out the JM Vidal branch. So now what happens is when I do git status, it tells me I'm on branch JM Vidal. Before it was telling me I'm, I was on branch master. Uh, on branch master right there. So I'm on branch JM Vidal and uh, so what I can do is you know I can add added on JM Vidal branch. So there it is I've changed that one. Oh yeah. So I have changed this one and uh, I'm gonna add and commit then so now everything is fine you know and uh, again it looks like that but if I do click check out master and uh, I go back and look at that file you see it's not there anymore so I can uh, I can go you know, I can check out any branch so I can quickly go back and forth between my branches and they'll be completely different. So it is exactly like having two directories. 
Uh, if I do git branch, then it lists all the branches that I have and then tells me the one I'm on. Okay, so when it works, I would say okay, I'm going to add something else. Add it again. Git and uh, git message again. Git log. So here's my log on the JM Vidal branch. This JM Vidal change again, etc. Uh, if I check out master, there's my git log. It doesn't have those things, right? Uh, but let's say now, you know, the things I did on the JM Vidal branch uh, are good and I want to put them back into master because normally uh, your master branch is sort of this is generally the one that we publish, you know, the one that is going to get deployed. It's going to get pushed out to the website or whatever. Um, so the JMV Lab branch, that was some stuff I was trying out. I was adding new features. But hey, it worked out. I'm happy with them. Let's put them back into master. So all I have to do is switch on to the master branch, as I just did. So let's see, we're on the master branch. And uh, I'm going to merge. Um, with uh, I can either merge or I can now um, um, well that's forward but yeah I'm gonna merge with JM Vidal JM Vidal and uh, there you go so now when I do a git log it shows all this JM Vidal changes uh, and now when I look at a dot text it uh, it shows you the changes I made on the JMV Dow branch, even though uh, we we're on the master branch. So everything that I did over there got moved over here. And uh, in this case, you know, it was fine because if you remember, the, those changes didn't conflict. I didn't make any changes in master, so it didn't conflict with uh, the JMV Dow changes. So we could just fast forward, as it says. Uh, just make all those changes to the ADA text file. Five lines were changed. Um, if there was a problem, then uh, Git will tell you there's a problem, and the text file would be changed, and you know you have to follow, uh, fix those changes, commit them again, get that fixed. That's a little more complicated. Uh, but uh, these branches are a great way of trying out. Uh, new stuff, and you can have many of them, and just try out new code and see if that works. And if it doesn't, uh, then uh, you can abandon it. Uh, if it works, you can merge it back in.